so thank you again, uh, Steve, for uh, joining us uh, to talk about New Belgium Brewery and um, the impact that COVID-19 really has on has had on on your business. So I'd love to start by asking you, when did COVID-19, when did you first start seeing an impact and how has that impact shifted or evolved over the last several weeks? Yeah, I think for us, January and February, things were really quiet. Um, you know, there was certainly some murmuring and, and people were sort of tracking the news stories out of China. But, you know, for most Americans, I, I don't think this is a this is a top of mind concern uh, in, in January and February. And when March hit, it got really real, real quick um, for us. And, and that's when we created our own COVID-19 task force, uh, which involves, you know, most of the team that reports to me. It involves our onsite doctor, Dr. Patty, um, who's been an amazing resource to us. Uh, and then, you know, some other key people um, around the organization um, whose teams are probably more impacted um, than others. And that group meets weekly um, so that we can get real time updates from each department, talk about communication needs we have, talk about operations changes that we have, um, and, and really just sort of form the backbone of almost like a crisis management team, if you will, as, as we tried to work through that. And, and the first thing we really did was, was we closed, we call them our LCs, our liquid centers, but you know, most people would just refer to them as a tap room, but, but we closed our tap rooms um, on March 13th. And we were the first company in Fort Collins to do that, right? And I actually called, I don't know if you know Darren Atterbury, the city manager, yep. uh, but I called Darren ahead of time and I gave, I gave him a heads up about an hour or two beforehand because I wasn't sure how the city would react to it at the time or, or, or what other sort of actions that might spur um, across the city, right? Um, but but as I kind of expected, right, um, after we closed, a lot of others closed pretty quickly following our lead. And I got a lot of calls and emails actually from others in the community thanking us for taking that action as it related to our employees and our community because it sort of gave them the cover to do that yeah. um, as well. So that was kind of great to hear and great to see. Please share with me what you have been doing to lead your team through this pandemic. What pivots have you made at New Belgium Brewery to adjust to the situation and how have your company values, and I know at New Belgium your values are really important, how have those values guided your decisions as you navigate through this crisis? Yeah, I think it is good to actually start that with the values, right? So New Belgium has, has 10 core values and beliefs, but the one that's really been most relevant as we talked, as we've worked through the COVID situation is is balancing the, the myriad needs of our business, um, our coworkers, and their families. And when, and when you have that as sort of a bedrock principle, right, that, that New Belgium's had in place uh, for a long time, right, it, it gives you a really easy uh, guideline, if you will, right, um, to, to make decisions. Um, and having that strong set of values in place and that being really authentic to, to New Belgium, I think is, is really key. What would you say, Steve, that you've learned? What has been your biggest learning as you've navigated through uh, this global pandemic? You know, I think from a from a leadership standpoint, um, there's you know, it comes back to to a couple of things that, that I think are always true, but are, but are really heightened in times like this, right? Um, the first one is you just got to be transparent in your communication, right? And, and nothing beats at the end of the day telling the truth to your team. And a lot of times the hardest thing to do, right, is to say, I don't know, right? right. But, but, in, but in this instance, as we're all trying to deal with COVID, the answer is often, I don't know, right? I was asked today, you know, when, when, do, when do I think that we'll have, um, you know, office workers back at the brewery? I, I don't know. Right, I and mean, I really don't. Yeah. Um, it might be in two or three weeks. It might be in August. I, it, you know, it's it's hard to to predict those kinds of things. Um, but being able to say that uh, and feel comfortable saying that, right, is you know as important as anything. Because if I say May fifteenth, right, then May fifteenth rolls around. It's like you said we'd be back, right? And <laughs> and you know you yeah. don't want to you don't want to set expectations on things you don't know. And that's and that's really important. And I think. It, over time, it, it does help you as a leader build credibility. You know, I've also learned just how resilient our teams are, right? Um, and and that's been really that's been really cool to see. So, 
we uh, in March, right? So sort of mid mid March is when all the bars and restaurants started shutting down, mm-hmm. and we everything that that we produced essentially changed to packaged beer. Right? So we don't make draft beer anymore. Everything's in you know everything's in cans or bottles, right? Since there's since there's right. no on premise, and so between essentially in the last two weeks of March, our our orders changed so dramatically that we basically made. 5 million extra cans or bottles of beer by the end of March than we would have thought we would have by on like March 10th, say, right? Like that's, that's how much, and you know, it come here and say, oh, it's 15,000 cases that switched out or 15,000 barrels that switched out of draft, but into package. But if you really think about it in terms of beers, right, that's, that's 5 million beers, right? So we had to get that glass or get those cans and get that cardboard and, and make sure we had the right beers. Cause what we sell in packages a little bit different than what we sell in draft in a lot of cases. And so that's a pretty huge amount of change to manage in two to three weeks, especially right as everyone was becoming aware of COVID, right? And all the impacts of it. And I was super proud of how resilient our team was. And you just realize the amount of, you know, amazing work that the team yeah. can get done when when it's really critical, right? Um, to, the, to the business. And I was super proud of that. Yeah. Um, and then probably, you know, the last thing is just how much, um, our team in New Belgium um, really values the community and, and wants to give back. And it's been it's been really cool to see from the bar and restaurant fund. And you know we were able to raise um, you know well over two hundred thousand um, dollars to help uh, to help that industry um, and help the people right directly um, through these three hundred fifty dollars grants we gave out, which was really cool. Um, and we saw that, and we worked with our friends at Leopold Brothers. Um, down just outside of Denver um, to start making hand sanitizer. So as I said, when we when we switched from uh, draft beer to package beer, we had a lot of stuff that was supposed to go into draft that never made it. And you know the the, the sanitizers require alcohol yep. right, to work, but it was a huge help to the distilleries to Leopold to start with uh, a product that had already already has some ABV because then they can distill it much more quickly. Um, and so we were able to, to donate hundreds of thousands of dollars of essentially beer that was going to go out of code down to them. And then they were able to use their distilleries to turn it into sanitizer. So that was cool too. And that was a whole new line of work and a whole new sort of supply chain we had to figure out and, and make work. And we're now delivering meals um, within Fort Collins. So the Bohemian Foundation is doing some great work um, with some local restaurants, um, you know, Mood House and DC Oaks and Rio, and they're all really stepping up, but we were kind of the last leg that actually needed someone to deliver the meals. And so, you know, we're playing our role in that too. Uh, and our local delivery team was so excited to be able to just help, right? Um, to help the community and get those meals that last mile of the people who really needed them. So there's all that kind of stuff that's going on and people's capacity for caring is kind of, is, is limitless, right? And that's, that's really cool to see in a time like this as well. That is really cool to see, but you know, I'm not, I'm really not at all surprised that your folks have s- stepped up like this and it's, it's just giving back to the community, the, those things that we can do that makes the, it just makes us feel better. You know, we're really making a difference. So thank you um, so much for doing that. And the fund also, as you said, this hospitality industry, the food and um, restaurants uh, industry, that's, it's been so hard hit. Yeah. So I'm sure those grants were very much appreciated. The impact of COVID-19 will continue for some time into the foreseeable future. Do you see any permanent changes to your business post-pandemic? And we touched on this actually a little bit already. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's hard to say that it's going to be permanent, right? Um, I, I certainly think, you know, at some point we'll have a vaccine um, or a cure or something else. And I think, it, you know, at that point things will return to, you know, more normal. That may be, who knows, 18 months, 24 months, don't know. But um, so I don't know if it'll be permanent, but I do think long lasting for sure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to me, the biggest issue is just how that on what we call the on premise, right? But bars and restaurants really return. And, and that's 20 to 25% of our business. And you know we don't really know what the future is going to look like um, there, and and that's that's hard to predict, right? And I think that will be a change that that will be a change for a while. You know, a, a lot of the the bar and restaurant owners I've talked to says, you know, even if seventy or eighty percent of the people come back, 
that's not enough to sustain the businesses, right? right. And so it, it's it's going to be hard to see how, how that industry recovers and, and how long that takes. And then there may be a huge change to what to what consumers want, right? right. So is it, you know they may be willing to go out, but then you know, will, will people still want mixed drinks, knowing that you know I. Uh, uh, you know, a bartender is, has, I guess, been more involved in making that product, right, than maybe they would be for a can of beer. Is that going to cause a shift of, you know, will consumers still want draft beer? There's all these things we just don't know how consumers are going to react, at least, you know, in that medium term. Yeah. Um, and so we'll have to we'll have to adjust to that, right, and, yeah. and, and, and figure out the, the, the right way to behave. And then short term, you know, we operate our own tasting rooms at the breweries, right? And so what are those CDC recommendations. What are the state, right. you know, guidelines going to be for us to be able to operate safely, and and for us to even be able to bring people back to the offices, right? right. So I think short term there's going to be some really big changes, and you know, to to your point earlier, probably probably less than the university faces because you know, as you've said, you know, you, you're kind of your own little city, so yeah. you, you've got a lot more issues to resolve, right, as, as you think about reopening than we do, but both of us are going to have a lot of short-term and medium-term changes um, to, yeah. to, to how our organizations work. Yeah, because we're both in service businesses, Yeah, and that's people, and this is all about people, and so, yeah, there's there's going to be a lot in terms of re, our facilities-related uh, changes to um, ensure social distancing, et cetera. But I, I think it will be interesting to see any differences that we might see in consumer behavior, as you were alluding to, um, and even the delivery models, which are new that kind of emerged out of this time, uh, if that will continue or continue to grow. But, you know, I think people are also craving their community. So. Yeah. No, uh, that's true. People, people will want to get out. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what's interesting, you're seeing a lot of polls around, um, you know, people's concerns about going back out, whatever that is, if it's to their gym or to the restaurant or to the grocery store, you'd see all kinds of different industries talking about this in different ways. And there's certainly some, some legitimate consumer concern there. There's also a lot of people who really do want to get back out yeah. um, for whatever, for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, how that's going to kind of play through is, it's really tough to predict. Yeah. Um, what, finally, is there any advice that you would like to share with um, our students, community, business leaders regarding how to navigate COVID-19 going forward? If I was gonna give it a couple of thoughts, you know, the first one is, is, is going back to that point before, is just be honest, right? None of us really know what's gonna happen in the future. Um, don't don't feel a need to make it up. Um, and and you know, communicate as openly as, and, and transparently as you can um, around the issues you do know and, and say, I don't know when you don't know, right? I think that, that would be the first thing. I think the second thing is, is, is probably don't be afraid to make decisions. And, you know, we're, a lot of times it's, um, you know, there's a desire to have a lot of information and a lot of facts, right? Before, before we say yes or no to something. And in this case, we all as leaders have to make decisions when we don't know all the facts and we still don't know all the facts about COVID and we certainly didn't know them, you know, two months ago when we all started to, to have to make decisions, but your organization is, is relying on you to make decisions. Um, and it's, it's important that you do that. And I guess if those are the first thing, the third one would be as, as you're making decisions and as you're communicating, you know, do it in the context of the company that you are, right? Or the company that, that you're trying to be. And as I said, in New Belgium, we have really strong core values and beliefs. And so that that makes it easier for me. I'm, I'm super lucky in that sense, as I said, but it's, it's important that if you said, this is who we are as a company, right? Um, that you're willing to act that way now. Thank you so much. I know you don't know when you're gonna be open so I know you don't want to create an expectation <laughs> because you don't know, but I will just say, can't wait uh, for the day that that happens. And on behalf of our community as well, Steve, thanks to you and New Belgium Brewery for all that you're doing um, with the with the grants um, to, to help the um, bar and restaurant industry, with the hand sanitizer, with the delivery service um, of food in our community. Um, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. 
Oh, you're you're very welcome, Beth. And thanks for everything that CSU is doing right now and managing through all of this. And I can't imagine the complexity, as I said. So it's been it's been great that you know CSU has um, has really been a leader as well um, in this space. And so you know I can't wait until we're all we're all back together and with some of the other businesses and 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 you know civic organizations around Fort Collins and we're able to kind of get back to doing what we all want to be doing for for our city here. I agree, and, and thank you for that. Um, so there's three other questions, and Steve, what has been your favorite beer to enjoy during the global pandemic? Um, the one you're drinking right now. Right? Old Aggie, Old it's Aggie. delicious. Um, I am, uh, more than anything, I, I do love lager, so Old Aggie and Mountain Time, um, I probably drink more of. Uh, in the past two two months um, than anything else. Although Voodoo Imperial, um, Voodoo Ranger is now actually our, our biggest brand yep. uh, nationally by, by a lot. Uh, and I know when I talk to CSU students, Voodoo Imperial tends to be their favorite brand. Yeah, well, we're grateful. Um, second question, what is your recommendation for staying sane while working from home with kids? You know, enjoy it, I think, more than anything. So, you know, with an eight and 11 year old, they're they're at a great age. I think, you know, you know, knock on wood a little, but you know, we, we've been fortunate, you know, personally that, you know, the virus hasn't, you know, impacted our family. We haven't gotten sick or we haven't had a parent or grandparent, right? Or aunt or uncle who's gotten sick. So, so we're very fortunate in that sense. And, um, you know, I don't think the kids sort of fully understand it. Um, you know, the severity of it and, and how it's impacting the world. Uh, so they actually enjoy the time, right? There's all this family times. So we eat three meals a day together, right? Because I'm, I'm working from home and we go on bike rides after dinner and, um, you know, we're playing. There's a lot more Monopoly being played, right? So that that's the way to, to, to keep it sane, right? It's actually enjoy like you know enjoy it and, and play into it and, and figure out you know it's almost like a two, it's been like a two-month family vacation in a way yeah uh, and and so that's i think to me that's been that's been the best part of it that's awesome and i'm sure you you travel and you haven't been traveling and that gives you more time with your family which is something this pandemic has given to all of us yeah well you know i think it's going to be hard for people to go back to the office, right? Or to start traveling again, right? There's gonna be, um, you know, put put aside the health precautions and COVID and all that, you know, there's a lot of people I'm talking to who, who are really enjoying working from home. And I also think we're being forced to realize how productive that we can be at home. And even for me, like I don't have a long commute to the brewery. Um, I, you know, I got maybe 20 minutes each way. And but still I picked up 40 minutes a day yeah. right, by, by working here at home. and. Um, I think there'll be some permanent changes in the way, you know, people choose to work or companies choose to work. I, I can see people having a, a work from home day, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and you know, I think we'll see a lot of other impacts like that uh, as, as people get out of sort of dealing with the crisis and then think about, hey, what do we, what do we learn from that and what can we do differently? I think you're right. Um, final question. Have you made ban banana bread yet? Banana bread, no. Uh, but my kids have been actually, they've been, they've been playing around. They've been making sourdough bread, um, which has been pretty cool. And you get the yeast and there's, you know, there's some loose, loose relations to making beer, um, right? As, <laughs> as, true. As, as, as part of that. So uh, my, my eight year old, he's got big plans for some kind of sourdough pizza crust for this weekend. So he's mm -hmm. making pizza for everybody. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I, can, awesome. I, can, I can let you know on Monday. I'm pretty um, jealous you've even found yeast in the grocery store because it's like it's empty. But I, I know with kids, uh, you know, a baking project counts as math, science and art all in one. Oh, yeah. We've been making cakes and even and we're watching all those cooking shows, right? Like, you know, nailed it. And and uh, there's there's been a ton of fun stuff on. So they're, they're picking up all kinds of new ideas. <laughs> That's very fun. Well, thank you again. And I hope you all have a, a great weekend and, you know, we'll be thinking about you. I hope you and all your, uh, your family and your employees continue to stay well and stay safe. And when it is safe to come out, looking forward to seeing you at New Belgium.
All right. Thanks, Beth. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this today. And same to you and your family and the whole CSU community. And we'll throw a little get together over at the brewery as soon as as soon as we can. Cannot wait. <laughs>